In the depths of Grineer Invention, one mad creator wondered why they use bullets instead of bouncing saw blades. Then, with no one to stop them, they made a rifle with that very concept. Now with the touch of the void to evolve into an incarnate form, we can have homing, burning, exploding bouncing saw blades. I'll show you how to get it, as well as the perks, the builds, and the bugs in the new incarnate Mitre. I'm the Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. The Mitre is an early game weapon, acquired by defeating the dual target assassination mission on Ceres, taken down both Captain Vor and Lieutenant Ledge Krill. The main blueprint and its four parts all drop from this same fight, with a 1 in 6 chance each, the final one safe being taken up by the Twin Gremlins blueprint. Being unfettered RNG, how long it'd take you to get the Mitre can be quite varied. Starting from scratch, you have a 1.54% chance of getting all parts in just 5 runs, with around a 50% chance of getting all parts in 12 runs. Around 1 in 20 players will need over 26 runs, 1 in 100 over 34 runs, and around 1 in 10,000 will need over 59 runs. It's not as bad as farming Equinox, but you may feel the grind a bit. Fortunately, this mission also drops the Frost component blueprint, so you may already have some Mitre pieces, potentially reducing your overall grind time. With all the parts acquired, it's just one 12 hour foundry job and the weapon is yours. Well, the base version. You still need to get the Incarnate Genesis adapter from the Steel Path version of the circuit when it's available. The base version of the Mitre is relatively underwhelming. While firing saw blades might seem like a powerful choice, the stats don't hold through normally. A 5% critical chance and a base 100 damage on the uncharged shot means this weapon is cool in the early game, but falls off hard when other weapons become available. You can charge the shot to make it more powerful, rising to 10% critical chance and 250 base damage, as well as supercharging the status chance from 20% to 50%. The Incarnate Evolutions fix this into something far more powerful. Evolution 1, as with all Incarnate weapons, unlocks the Incarnate mode. On the Mitre, this comes with a maximum of 20 charges, gaining 5 charges with every headshot on the normal mode. Also like the other Incarnate guns, Multi-Shot allows for multiple charges simultaneously, meaning that with more than 3 Multi-Shot, you can potentially fully charge the Incarnate mode in just one shot. You can transform with any number of charges by pressing the secondary fire button, and likewise transform back to normal mode by doing the same thing or by running out of charges. For the Mitre, the Incarna mode energizes the saw blades into glowing projectiles. These retain the slash and status focus of the normal mode, though with an increased status chance, critical chance and critical damage. On top of that, the saw blades are explosive. This is just like the Incarna Latron, with every bounce or direct hit releasing an explosion. For the Mitre, this is pure heater base with a small 3 meter radius and matching crit and status stats to the direct hit. Unlike the normal mode of the Mitre, these shots cannot be charged. You simply unleash them at a rate that suits you up to the fire rate of the weapon. So far, if you're familiar with my Latron Incarnate video, you might assume the Mitre is just a slower and clunkier version of the Latron. However, the Incarnate Mitre distinguishes itself by making the Incarnate mode homing. The homing power is relatively weak, only within a few degrees, but it is enough to curve the shots downwards towards enemies and land more consistent damage. Not only that, but the Incarna projectile will tend to bounce directly at other nearby enemies, allowing for a chain reaction of multiple direct hit explosions, sometimes even bouncing around corners to hit enemies you cannot see. The homing is tied to the projectile speed, with higher speed making homing worse. Conveniently, the projectiles slow down after their first hit, making subsequent hits more likely to connect. Overall, the Mite can get in usually around 4 bounces in close range, down to maybe only one if fired from long range at scattered enemies. So with this Incarnum power in mind, let's have a look at the other evolutions. Evolution 2 gives the options of Swift Saw Blades or Plentiful Mayhem. Swift Saw Blades grants you plus 77 damage to all attacks, affecting a normal shot, charge shot, Incarnum direct hit and Incarnum explosions. The damage bonus is base damage, meaning it's affected by mods just like the weapon's own damage. If you have a channeled ability, this evolution also grants you plus 70% fire rate. The channeled ability only counts if it is actively draining energy, so abilities with a constant drain like MAME will always count, whereas abilities like Immolation, which only drain under specific circumstances, in Immolation's case that's when the heat bar is full, will only apply the fire rate buff then. In essence, if you'd be prevented from gaining energy over time from features like Xenerix Wellspring, that is when the fire rate buff is active. The fire rate on the Mitre affects how quickly you can fire off projectiles in both modes, 
as well as how quickly the charge shot builds up. As for Plentiful Mayhem, this one offers a smaller plus 57 damage bonus, and then a further plus 20 damage on each multi-shot hit. This comes with a trade-off of multi-shot consuming ammo from your reserve ammo pool. The 20 damage bonus is unaffected by pure damage like serration, but it is boosted by your elemental and critical modifiers. This perk is absolutely useless and should not be used in its current state whatsoever. I'll go into more detail as to why in the last chapter of this video, but for now, just don't use it. Evolution 3 lets us pick from Swift Deliverance, Ready Retaliation, or Mercenary Chamber. All three of these are relatively minor perks. Swift Deliverance provides you with a plus 50% projectile speed boost. This affects all firing modes and is slightly weaker version of the Terminal Velocity Mod's 60% boost. Ready Retaliation provides you with plus 100% reload speed bonus when reloading from empty, basically halving the time it takes to reload and to switch forms. Mercenary Chamber increases your normal mode reserve ammo capacity to 160, doubling it up from 80. Let's be real here, you're not going to be using the normal mode that much. The damage is all in the incarnate form, so Mercenary Chamber isn't required. If you somehow use up all of your miter ammunition, then you weren't aiming for any headshots, or you just weren't using the incarnate mode. That's on you. Swift Deliverance is the better always on perk, while Ready Retaliation is a more broadly useful perk and doesn't have an excess mod to do the same thing. Thanks to a bug at the moment, Ready Retaliation doesn't actually require you to reload from empty, just always giving you the bonus. For those reasons, I'd recommend just using Ready Retaliation for now. Again, more on that in the last video chapter. Finally, with Evolution 4, we have our power perks. You get a choice of Sawblade Storm, Commodore's Fortune, or Critical Parallel. Commodore's Fortune is a simple plus 22% critical chance to the base value of each firing mode. This means the normal attack jumps from 5% critical chance to 27%, while the incarnate form jumps from 20% to 42%. This is a base increase, again allowing mods to affect the result. Critical Parallel is similar, buffing both critical and status chance by 12%. Given that the Mitre already has a 56% status chance on the incarnate form, the 12% status chance is much less impactful than a higher critical bonus, so I'd consider Commodore's Fortune as near enough strictly superior, unless you're using the Mitre as a status primer. Sawblade Storm, however, is an entirely different kind of perk. This will make a change to the charge shot of the normal mode if you hold the charge for one second after reaching full charge. The one second is a fixed time, meaning fire rate buffs will not reduce it, but they do reduce the initial charge time. Once the second has passed, small energy rings will show up on the gun to indicate that Storm Shot is ready. Release to fire the charged Sawblade, delivering an explosion on impact. This explosion has a base damage of 1,400 blasts, not including the damage bonus from Evolution 2, with a radius of about 5 meters. The stats do not show up in the arsenal, but testing suggests it shares the critical and status stats of the charge shot itself. Unlike most radial effects, this one seems to have no damage fall off, either hitting fully or not at all. Now, while 1400 damage is a lot higher than the base 250 of the charge shot, as well as creating an AoE, it has serious downside of being a very slow charge time for a relatively limited AoE, using the weaker charge shot stats rather than the incarnate mode stats, and it doesn't have any homing to it. Add on the fact that you're giving up on 22% base critical chance to use this perk, and it's seriously underwhelming. Maybe if blast procs mattered for anything in Warframe it could be worth considering as an AoE self primer, but blast isn't useful. All told then, you'll usually be best to sticking to 22% critical buff. In essence then, I generally only recommend the Swift Saw Blades and Commodore's Fortune Evolution perks, along with your pick of Ready Retaliation or Swift Deliverance. With that in mind, let's look at some builds to get the most out of this. This first build is the ultimate all-rounder. If you absolutely do not want to swap between factions and just be somewhat ready for everything, this will do that. We've got pure damage from Primary Merciless, multi-shot from Galvanized Chamber, critical bonuses from Vital Sense, critical delay and bladed rounds, Viral from Malignant Force and Rhyme Rounds, Slash Procs from Hunting Munitions, and the Might of Specific Augment Neutralizing Justice for destroying Nullifier Bubbles, which works in both Incarnate and Normal modes, as well as triggering the Justice effect for a little healing, armor, and area damage. With this, you can handle basically any situation, though are vulnerable to enemies which are immune to status effects or have extreme shielding like Steel Path Treasurers. The extra slot of Terminal Velocity is completely optional, though I'd recommend it for an easier time landing more distant headshots for charging. 
As an optional change, you can swap out bladed rounds for hammer shot, removing the aim requirement and gaining some status chance for a loss of critical damage. If instead you're happy to specialise your builds on a per faction basis, swap in a faction mod to ramp up the innate heat and critical slash blocks we're generating. You can then run either bladed rounds or hammer shot if there are no nullifiers for you to deal with, or put in neutralising justice if you do have nullifiers for the mighty to take down. I still recommend sticking with heat slash viral even against the corpus as it's simply effective enough to deal with all their normal units and possess bonuses against their few armoured units. Just bring a magnetic status secondary or melee to support killing highly shielded corpus units. It's a standard rifle build for a reason. This just works. Now if you're absolutely insistent on using the Sawblade Storm Evolution for AoE charge shots and the terrible 10% critical chance, then you can go for a non-crit build like this. In order to fit in the Terminal Velocity Exodus mod, you'd need to further form the weapon which I simply refuse to do for an inferior firing mode. We've done away with any critical modding and fully focused on damage, status and multi-shot. Vile Acceleration here helps charge the shots that bit faster, and you can swap out Vigilante Armaments for Neutralising Justice if you need to deal with nullifiers. Still, don't do this. I'm only giving a build for the handful of players who'll insist on having an option for every firing mode. Now we've got the builds, and we understand the perks we can pick. If you just want the best from the Mitre, we're done. The final chapter of this video is about the problems this weapon has. To be clear, I usually try to be as positive as is reasonable with my videos, but the Mitre Incarnan is especially problematic. Firstly, it's buggy. The Incarnan projectile explodes twice on impact, direct or not. There's no reason for it to explode twice, it just does. Before you ask, yes, I did check to make sure I didn't leave any more shot on. It just does that. Plentiful Mayhem says it increases multi-shot damage by 20%. In reality, it increases it by 20 damage flat. That is a far cry from 20%. Ready Retaliation's reload speed bonus is always in effect, despite specifically mentioning it only triggers on reload from empty. Why? Because bug. The Mitre is supposed to innately have a 2.5 meter punch through according to the arsenal. Well, it turns out that both normal and incarna mitres don't consistently have that. They can punch through enemies, but often just won't and for no discernible reason. In testing in the simulacrum, it both did and did not punch through, seemingly at random, even during the same magazine. That's just the bug side, we also have the design side. Faster projectile speed leading to a worse homing angle seems weird to me. A perk specifically designed to make the projectile get to a target more quickly and typically more reliably makes it less reliable by narrowing the cone of effect. I would have expected the projectile to follow the same arc but faster rather than ending up with a wider turning radius worsening the homing feature. Then there's Sawblade Storm which says it increases the area of effect when you hold a charged shot. This is ridiculous because there is no AoE on the charged shot normally. This perk adds an entirely new damage instance in an AoE. There is no charge shot mechanic on the otherwise only AoE damage on the weapon, the Incarnate Projectile. Also, the charged AoE has a fixed 1 second hold time, completely unmoddable, which just slows down the application. To top it off, there are no stats in the arsenal for the Storm AoE to directly see what you're working with. Speaking of ridiculous perks, I already mentioned that Plentiful Mayhem is bugged in its damage output. There's another part of it which seems to be working as intended, yet makes no sense at all. Why would we want to use up ammo from the reserve ammo pool for firing multi-shot? This isn't the only weapon in the Daviri Incarnate selection to have this perk, and it's daft both times. Not only does this burn up ammo from the reserve in normal mode, it also makes you use up Incarnate mode significantly faster. It's negative ammo efficiency for no gain. Now if multi-shot worked differently, I might see the purpose. If multi-shot meant every time you fired multiple shots, you'd be consuming multiple bits of ammo, then we'd be getting somewhere. In that hypothetical world, a multi-shot of two would mean you'd empty your magazine twice as fast. There, the perk of firing multi-shot from reserve would make sense. You'd use the same amount of ammo, but had to reload less often. But we don't live in that world. We live in the superior one where multi-shot is literally creating additional bullets and projectiles out of thin air giving us the Cave Johnson special of more bullet per bullet. A supposed perk to consume ammo for multi-shot is a truly terrible downgrade. In fact, it's so rough that if you reached 5.0 multi-shot on the Mitre, then you'd use up literally all of your normal mode ammunition in a single mag dump. 
There are a lot of good things with the Daviri update, and these incarnate weapons are breathing new life into older, thematically interesting weapons that simply didn't keep up with the changing game. But bugs and design flaws like these are somewhere between disappointing and embarrassing. I don't need to know who came up with and who signed off on that multi-shot anti-perk, I just know that DE can do better. We've seen better. For now, you as a player can grab the Incarnate Mitre and can certainly use the functional features to their fullest, but I won't ask you to ignore or overlook the issues it has come with. Make of that what you will. In any case, I hope this guide has given you what you need to get the most out of it. That's all from me for now though, so as always, launch blades, pop bubbles, and fight well Tenno.